Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to implement the next step of the Zoom algorithm. Uh, so I've, I've managed to break this down into kind of two discrete steps, the whole business of Zooming. Uh, this did take me a while to figure out. Um, although it's only simple maths, it's, um, it's quite hard to actually visualize and think about the best way to do this. But uh, what, what we're going to do is when we when we look at the fractal, not that one clearly, um, but let's just run this because I think that's an old one that I generated. So the the very first zoom that we actually apply to this is going to replace the the code that we've got in at the moment to transform from bitmap coordinates to fractal coordinates. So we're going to start always from a position after applying an initial zoom, which we're going to work out where the, the zero, zero of the fractal is in the center of the screen. Now, when the user, uh, or when you select a point on the fractal that you want to zoom to, um, we're, we're gonna calculate then what the new center point that should be in the center of the screen is, and we're gonna calculate that relative to zero, zero. So if you click a point, if we take the center to be zero, zero, which the first, very first zooming will, will actually accomplish in a range. If you clicked a point that was, let's say, a uh, 100 pixels directly up from the center, then you'd say that the point 100 comma zero, because, uh, sorry, zero comma 100, because y is 100 pixels up, is the new center of the fractal. And then, of course, you could choose a new point to zoom in on, on the already zoomed fractal, and um, put that into your program and apply another zoom over the top of the existing zoom. Uh, so I figured out by a lot of trial and error and thinking about it that um, one good way to do this is we, from all the list of zooms, we calculate ultimately what the final actual central point in the fractal coordinates of the fractal should be. Which point in the fractal system, if we take uh, the center point here on this image to be zero, zero, which new point should eventually be at the center of the screen. So first we wanna take our list of zooms, although we haven't added any zooms to the list at the moment, but we'd, we would wanna take that list and calculate the, the center, the new center. So um, to, to do that, if we go to this add method here, if we look, let's, let's look at zoomlist.h. Here we've got a, um, well, we haven't got the variables we need at the moment, but we're, we'll, we'll put them in now. So um, we're gonna calculate a double m underscore x center and a double m underscore y center, and also a combined scale, which is the result of all the different scales that we've applied in this list. Let's copy this initialization, because I think we probably will need this here. So I'm initializing, initializing them all to zero, and you could do that in your constructor if you're using an older version of C++. Back to zoomlist.cpp now. When we do add, um, let's, let's take the m underscore x center for the moment. So every successive addition of a new zoom is gonna add some value to the center, add or subtract some um, value uh, to the calculation of where the center should be. And to get that value, first we calculate how far the point the user click is from the center, considering the center to be zero, zero, right in the middle of the bitmap. So to do that, we'd take the zoom.x coordinate and subtract from it the um, width of the screen, uh, yeah, the width of the screen divided by two, like that. That will give us the distance um, just just thinking about x, it would give us the distance of the x coordinate that the user has selected to zoom around to the center point of the screen if the center point in x is at zero. But we want it in the fractal coordinates. So what we do is we multiply it by m underscore scale to apply the scaling. And we also want to do that for y. So we, we apply this to y as well. So this is going to be m underscore height, 
multiply by scale. And we also need to calculate a combined scale. So um, this will apply uh, at whatever the present scale of the fractal is. And after that, we then calculate a new scale using the scale specified in the zoom. So to do that, we just say m underscore scale times equals zoom dot scale. Uh, so to test this out, what we can do is let, let's just output m underscore x center and I'll put some punctuation in there, m underscore y center, more punctuation and m underscore scale. Now, uh, yeah, let's, let's also add an end letter or end L if you prefer. And let's um, go to our main.cpp and add in some kind of zoom. So the, the first zoom that we want to apply here is, is just going to be simply the one that puts the, the that centers the fractal like this uh, and makes kind of zero, zero the center of the bitmap. So what we want after we've added that zoom is we, we want the center point of the bitmap to be zero, zero, the kind of center of the coordinate system. So to, to do that, let's, let's create a zoom list in our main.cpp here. So I'll, I'll just put it somewhere at the top here. Zoom list, zoom list. And then we can add a zoom to it. So we can say zoom.add and we're going to pass it a new zoom, which it's going to be able to handle because it, this accepts a const reference here. That should be zoom list, zoom list.add. So to, to, get the, um, to get the X and Y center to be zero, zero, if we go back and look at what we've done in zoomlist.cpp, if zoom.x was width over two, then indeed this would all be equal to zero. And similarly, if zoom.y was width over two, it will be equal to zero. So for the first zoom, let's just apply width over two, height over two, and I'll apply a scale of one for the moment, which would make the fractal incredibly tiny and right in the center of the screen. But just to do a bit of a test of this code now, I'll build this, so I've got some sort of error here. And that's just because in zoomlist.cpp now, because I'm using cout, of course I'm gonna to have to include uh, iostream. And I'm gonna to have to say using namespace standard. So let's build this and run it and see what kind of output we get from it. Uh, have I still got, I've still got an error here. Um, yeah, so when I, construct the zoom list, of course, I also need to pass it width and height. Okay, I think we're through with the errors now. Build it, run it, and take a look at the bitmap. So yeah, the, we can see here, we've got zero, zero for the X and Y center, but the scale is coming out at zero, and that's wrong. Uh, what we want is, when we initialize the scale, <coughs> excuse me, when we initialize the scale in zoomlist.h, Let's set the scale initially to 1.01 because that will be the default scale. It will be no scaling at all, neither shrinking it nor reducing it. And then finally, when we, when we run it, we see that the X center is zero, Y center is zero, and the scale is one. Uh, okay, so in the next tutorial, we can go on to actually implementing the code that calculates this zoom. And we can use that to replace our scaling code in uh, main.cpp here. So we've got this code that does the scale and we can replace it, replace this with our new Zoom algorithm after we've implemented just a bit more of it. Uh, so what, what we're going to end up trying to do is initially with this particular Zoom setting, we want, um, we want to be able to scale from X and Y and get results similar to what we're presently getting with this. Uh, so you, to do that, you just have to implement the uh, do Zoom method. So if you want to have a go at that, um, certainly have a go at it and see where you get. I think it is really difficult and I wouldn't sweat about it too much if it gets boring or, or it's just too hard because after all this isn't uh, part of C++ as such. This is a very particular algorithm that we're trying to 
apply here. But if you can, if you want a bit of an exercise and it is worth thinking about a little bit, try to implement do Zoom in such a way that with the present Zoom that we've already added, um, it it will give you similar results to what we've got here. The only thing you'll have to change is instead of having a scale of one, you would need a scale. In fact, let's just do that now. Let's say 4.0 divided by width. So that's a more realistic scale that should actually show the fractal on the screen. And if we set that like that, um, or we could, yeah, we could say two divided by um, height or whatever, but something like this would give us a sort of realistic scale. And then you should be able to get the res same results out of do zoom that you're currently getting from this. So have a go at that. Maybe just have a bit of a go at, go at it, have a think about it if you feel inclined. And then I'll show you how to actually do it in the next tutorial. So until next time, happy coding.